Hello everyone. Um, it is May 15th, 2020. Uh, the Contra Costa Health Services Department has uh, put forth an order allowing for highly regulated vehicle-based gatherings, um, which of course could be applied to a church gathering, but let me tell you about what I understand so far. Uh, I've read through the entire thing. Um, it goes into effect on the 19th of this month. Um, an application for a permit to, to have an event has to be submitted a week in advance of each event. And a gathering plan has to be supplied to the police department. They have a form for that. Um, vehicles have to be spaced at least six feet apart which doing some measuring in our parking lot and trying to be reasonable about how far what sound equipment we have available could could uh, reach we could probably accommodate about 18 cars um, but for gatherings of more than 10 vehicles it says the host must at its own cost arrange for and provide security sufficient to ensure compliance with the order and address any traffic and safety issues. The amount of security necessity, uh, necessary will be determined by the entity providing security, but should be more no, no more than that deemed necessary to maintain safety and ensure compliance with the order. <clears throat> Uh, it says the host shall comply with the provision by doing one of the following. And what they say is if you already have your own official security officers, you can use them. Or you can use the police department and pay them appropriately. Or you can use a private licensed security company and pay them appropriately. Um, I cannot find anything... Um, regarding a question that came to my mind, and that is, could we designate uh, some of our members to be security uh, for these events, or does it have to be somebody actually licensed? Um, and there, right now there's no getting through to the, uh, the uh, office to, to get such a question answered. So onward to other, other uh, aspects of it. First of all, also, while we might be able to accommodate 18 vehicles part of the rule is that each vehicle must contain only people who live in the same household and that the vehicle cannot uh, um, have more people in it than it was designed to hold um, the event each event must be by invitation only so in order to do this I would have to send each one of you a written invitation um, uh, the next part's not a big deal for us. Each gathering is limited to no more than 200 vehicles uh, and could be no longer than three hours, which I don't think would, would be any problem either. Um, they do have a specification that if any of the windows on a vehicle is open, the occupants of the vehicle must wear a face covering in conformance with the face covering order. So. Um, you've got five people in a vehicle that was made to, to uh, hold five people. You roll down the window so you can hear what's going on. Everybody must have a face covering on. Um, everyone must remain in their vehicles. Uh, the only exceptions are in case of an emergency or using a restroom. And if restrooms are open, then we must supply in the application the name of the person who will be monitoring people going in and out and ensuring social distancing if there is a line and we would have to supply the name of the person or persons sanitizing the restroom after each use or every 30 minutes. Um, there is a prohibition on providing uh, anything, selling anything, exchanging anything. I don't know if that would include the collecting of offering, but I'm assuming it would. I'd have to find some more details on that. Um, further, it says the gathering must have a designated organizational host who is responsible for ensuring compliance with this order 
and the shelter in place order during the gathering. Um, now, I wanted to see, it, because, you know, Oakley, of course, being its own city, uh, may have some other codes in place that um, are of concern. And so uh, I went to the City of Oakley website. They have not, as of yet, posted any kind of reply to the Health Department's announcement. But there is some significant concern in the City of Oakley Municipal Codes passed on January 14, 2020. Um, Section 4.2.208 has prohibitions, and it says, um, except as otherwise provided in this article, it is unlawful for a person to do any of the following acts. And I'm going to go down to uh, subsection E, which says, install, use, or operate a loudspeaker or sound amplifying equipment in a fixed or movable position or mounted on a sound truck for the purposes of transmitting sound to a person in or on the street, sidewalk, park, or public property without a permit obtained under section 4.2.210. Okay, um, basically if you're gonna use amplification equipment outdoors that will reach to beyond our fence, um, then uh, we would have to have a permit. And under um, permits for sound amplification, section 4.2.210, um, it's interesting that it, 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 we may not even be considered because the church building is, is uh, situated in an area that is designated for residential and business. And because there are residences, they might just turn us down flat out. Um, if they consider it, it says uh, an application uh, must be submitted for the permit at least three working days before the proposed activity and must be accompanied by an application fee in the amount set by the city council resolution. Uh, and now I would really like to talk to somebody about this. Um, but a sound amplification permit uh, as of 2019 in the city of Oakley is $406 for an event. Um, I have to look into seeing if that would be something we would have have to have or or if that's even the, the cost of applying or just the cost of getting a a permanent outdoor amplification permit it's vague um, the big concerns here um, are first of all that sound amplification permit could cost us 406 dollars and that might even be for each uh, separate event um, it might be a permit for uh, an extended period of time. But the other thing is, uh, if we are required to use police or licensed security, then there would be a cost incurred for using such services. And what it would cost would be dependent upon how many security officers the agency thinks we need. Um, this is a uh, you know a, a, this is a bureaucratic red tape headache for me as you know I am not a businessman I am a, a pastor a teacher a counselor um, this stuff is mind boggling to me um, I'm going to see what more I can find out about it as I said this goes into effect um, next Tuesday. And we would have to have an application in to have a single event uh, at least a week in advance. We'd also have to have a permit for sound amplification because I can't yell that loud. Um, I'm not even sure if the sound application that we have available to use would be um, sufficient. 
because what it would be is, is my 100 watt bass amp uh, with a mixing board and a mic. Um, it can get pretty loud, but when you take it outdoors, of course, sound dissipates pretty easily. Um, I would also have to include in, in, in the um, application to use sound equipment exactly what the equipment is. Uh, if we are found in violation of the sound um, amplification uh, laws, we could we would be fined the first time no more than one hundred dollars, the second time no more than five hundred dollars, and it goes up each time. Um, there are heavier penalties involved with not complying with the. Uh, highly regulated vehicle gathering uh, rules. Um, another thing I'm going to look into is uh, there's a, uh, a website called Zoom, which Pastor Sean Hendricks uses in connection with the American Canyon Church. Um, and I've actually got an account with it, a free account. You, you can log on and um, uh, Brother Sean has hosted some pastor meetings kind of just to encourage one another. So I've been uh, involved in that. Uh, it's pretty easy to use, but I'm gonna look into what it would take to be able to have you know, enough people log on because I believe there is a, a, a bit of a fee if you're gonna have more than I think it is 10 people, but I will look into that and I will let you know what information I have on that. I will let you know if I can get through the red tape here regarding these highly regulated vehicle gatherings. And uh, I just wanted you to all be informed right now that this is out here, but they're not making it easy. So uh, keep these things in prayer. I will look into options. If the Zoom thing can work, then we can all actually log on together and I can preach at you from my desk. <laughs> and uh, even um, we can even have discussion in that way. So I'll let you know what more I find out about that as well. Uh, miss seeing all of you. Hope we can do that soon, even if we find a way to do this vehicle gathering we're not going to be able to be shaking hands and you know hugging each other that that could get us in big trouble yeah it's against the law to hug people in public right now um i look forward to that going away uh anyway god bless you all love you hope to see you soon Bye bye